hear me? Yeah, great. So I'm Yves Nicola. I work for a company called uh, Soprasteria. And Soprasteria, it's a 4 billion euros uh, software integration companies uh, in Europe, most European country, UK, we have customers like the NHS, FCA, big guys all over Europe. And that's about it, just like my colleague from Capgemini told this morning, just come and work for us, and that's about corporate stuff. But three years ago, we, in, in big companies like ours, so we have a lot of developers, we have about, we estimate about 20,000 people uh, are in a position to commit code at some point in, in our company. And we often forget the fact that those developers, they have something in between their two ears that they can use to actually think and bring new ideas. And it was difficult for them to, uh, to actually express themselves because when you get, we don't have any proper uh, playground, sandbox, whatever things, and they weren't able to bring code. So three years ago, we started a program that we called the Digital Enablers, which was initially started really to, uh, to help foster bottom-up innovation and help people share code, capitalize, reuse. We uh, selected, and we didn't have any proper global Git platform at this time, so we started this, and we selected GitLab to do that. Small project. GitLab was launched in March 2017. And what, so we selected GitLab over GitHub for three main reasons. Uh, the, the most important one, uh, that there was a bit of price at this time, price point was lower. But we like the fact that also they had an integrated orchestrator uh, in GitLab CI that, that we could use and have this all DevOps approach. Three, two, uh, almost three years after, uh, we progressively standardized over GitLab in the company. We have 9,000 users on the platform. We have about 9,000 projects, and it began to be uh, to it, it began to be the uh, the source code repository platform that we use over there. I will give a few words on 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 this one. What I highlight, which is on this one, what I want to try. As I said, we are located in 10 different European countries, and if if you do a search. Inner, source is, uh, inner sourcing is something which is difficult in a company, but at least now, when you do a search on all the main technologies, you have a list of proper projects, and not only the project itself and the components they can reuse, but they find names of people that they can call and that they have worked on the technology, and this is a huge value to the whole company. The second digital enabler that we launched after that was we wanted to have also, we had the build with this uh, GitLab-based platform, we wanted people to be able to run their code, their sandbox, what they are trying to develop. And we started what we called Inner Shift, which is a container as a service based environment, based on OpenShift. As some of our colleagues from Delta told earlier, if you don't know OpenShift, OpenShift is just Kubernetes with a, a bit of additional stuff to, uh, to ease your, your developer's life in, in some way. But it's really Kubernetes based. This is accessible, once again, as soon as you have an email from our company, a Soprasaria email and password, you have a free access to be able to deploy code on InnerSource. And we have a complete service offer on top of that. So based on that, and what we, com what we added over, the, uh, over the, the different years is that in this all digital enablers environment that we have provided to the developers, we have progressively used a complete DevOps environment. So as I, rem as I told you initially, we started the project with just, we are going to deploy a GitLab platform so that people can share and reuse code in some way. But people voted with their feet, right? They liked the platform, they liked, it was very easy to go on that just with their email and password linked with our IAM system. And so they begin to, to put real project code on that and now, this, we, we, we did the journey to DevOps in, in three major steps. The first one was just set up the platform, first thing. E then the second step was progressively the whole company standardized as for GitLab as the source code, Git-based source code management platform. And the last step which is done uh, since basically, which is effective since this spring is that we have migrated all our 
standard-based CI-CD templates, which was all Jenkins-based uh, and in, in dedicated VMs. We migrated that to GitLab CI templates. And as you can see, this is a screen copy of our instance. You know that you can have instance template. All these different things include our standard way of um, obviously the, the project architecture itself, but all the CI CD behind. And that is, that is massive adoption, and this is massive reduction time. Once again, it's used by more than 9,000 users in the group. So as a lesson, this is, sorry, it's very quick. It's only a light dictation. I'm, I'm showing that uh, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know how I'm doing on time. Five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, so I'm, I'm pretty good. So what I want to mention is we didn't start, as, as a software integration company, we are not so much developing applications for ourselves. We are developing applications for our customers. And our customers, they are, you know, maybe some of you are in the room, but they are big companies all over Europe. We are talking about people like Airbus. We are talking about people like the FCA here. We are talking uh, about people like the, uh, the big energy company in Germany. So they are, we are helping them build their software. So we have, and, and they give us the way they, they want to work in some way, like we are using their CI, CD, and whatever. And we have been able to use GitLab to help them bring all this dev DevOps pipeline using GitLab CI in our, uh, in our industrial platform. And the way we have done that, we have not done that in a top-down way. We have not saying once, we have not said Wednesday, okay, everybody, you should use that. We just started, Deploying the platform, people like it, came it, and we, we used, we, we designed the platform. It was not just the implementation. It was setting up the GitLab instance itself, linking that to our uh, identity management system so that everybody with just with his email password, he has the account. And moreover, we have set up a complete service environment where we guarantee now uh, the fact that we uh, update the platform every month. Uh, you know, GitLab is giving the, the release every 22nd of the month. Well, one week after, we are updating the platform. We have one month delay because we want to test that the, the release is good, but we are giving this service to the user. And people liked it. And we are working in this way with the IS department of our company. And we changed the way by, this, the, by the service we were providing to the user. We really changed the way the, the people and the developing community was seeing the IS uh, department and the infrastructure department in our company. So if you think that just, you know, we are, we are in the service world, people, wherever they are, they are voting with their feet in some way. If you managed it in a way where you think as the uh, empowered developer, as your customer in a standard way, and obviously taking advantage of the GitLab-based all DevOps platform, you are going to, uh, to be able to deploy that at scale in your company. And once again, that's 10, 000, about 10,000 projects used in all the different countries of the company in a, in a single way. Thank you very much, and I'm available uh, in the rest of the day to uh, answer any questions you could have or share experiences. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Eves.